Hello students, welcome to today's lesson where we are going to look at unusual expansion of water or what we call anomalous expansion of water. Now this one is defined as the unusual behavior of water in which it contracts when heated and it expands when cooled. And this happens between the temperature of 0 degrees Celsius and 4 degrees Celsius. To illustrate that, we are going to consider heating ice from negative 8 degrees Celsius until it changes to water and its temperature rises to 8 degrees. Then, we are supposed to plot a graph of volume versus temperature and density versus temperature. So, we look at the first graph. We are heating from negative 8 to positive 8. So, as you can see, from negative 8 to 0 degrees, there is expansion. That one we have a normal expansion of water. There is increase in size and volume. But when you move from 0 degrees to 4 degrees, this is where we have abnormal, unusual expansion of water. Instead of the volume increasing, it is reducing. Then beyond 4 degrees, you find that now the water behaves normally. It starts increasing in volume when it is heated. When you come to the graph of density versus temperature, from negative 80 degrees to zero, we see that the density is decreasing. So what happens is that as the temperature or as the temperature increases, the volume is increasing. And because density is mass per unit volume, and mass is not changing, but the volume is increasing, it implies that the density will decrease. That is what we have here. But between 0 to 4 degrees, where the volume is decreasing, the density increases. Beyond 4 degrees, where the volume is increasing, the density decreases. Then we move to effects of anomalous expansion of water. In this case, we have the first one, the freezing of lakes and ports. In our case here, we are saying during winter, that is very cold regions or very cold seasons, water freezes into ice. The ice is less dense because it has increased in size. It is less dense than water and therefore the ice floats on water. When it floats on water, it acts as an insulator and therefore the water below will have a conducive environment for the aquatic life. So you can see in our diagram here, we have ice that is acting as an insulator, but below that we have conducive environment that is from 4 degrees to 1 degree where animals, all aquatic animals can live comfortably. Then number two, we have icebergs. This one, when the water is cool, it will form ice. And this one we are saying, it will expand and these ice particles will be inside the water, especially when we are talking of lakes. So when you are moving using your ships, you find that these icebergs can pose a great danger. Then we have withering of rocks. This happens when we have that the water that are trapped between the rocks freezes. When they freeze, they increase in size and therefore this leads to breakage of rocks into small pieces. Then we have bursting of water pipes. So when water that is being carried by the pipes freezes, it will expand and increase in size and that can lead to bursting of those pipes. Then we have application of expansion and contraction of solids. One, we have the expansion joints in steam pipes. You find that when you have pipes that are carrying steam, they always fitted with a loop, what we call the expansion joint. This will give room for expansion. So as the steam is moving, or as it is passing through the pipe and it expands, or the temperature decreases, you'll find that it will have a room where it can expand. This will prevent the breakage of the pipes. Then we have the fixing of railway lines. When we are having or when the railway lines are being constructed, there is what we call expansion gaps that are left. These sections are held together but by what we call fish plates and the bolt holes in these rails are oval. 
they are over so that they can give us free expansion and contraction as the bolt move freely in the holes then we have that in modern ways or in, in in a modern method a way of allowing expansion is that these layers are slanting or they overlap and when they overlap that gap that is left will allow for expansion so let us look at our diagram here we are saying that these bolt holes are oval these are the fish plates so these bolts can move freely here and this is the gap this gap is connected by what we are calling the fish plates this one so these holes are oval so that now the bolt can move freely and this will give us a room for expansion then in our next diagram we are saying that in our modern ways these layers are overlapping they are overlapping and this gap will give us a room for expansion then we have this fixing of steel bridges as you can see in our diagram when the steel bridges are being constructed we have the steel girders on one side these are fixed but on the other side these girders are lying on rollers this is what we call the free head and these rollers are allowing for expansion and contraction then we have rivets when we want to fix two metal plates we always use a rivet but now a rivet is fitted when it is hot and then hammered as you can see in our diagram here we fix the rivet and then you hammer on the lower side when it is hot so on cooling you find that that rivet will contract and it will pull the two plates together and that will ensure that that joint is very strong then we move to installation of telephone or what we call the electric wires so this one they are loosely fixed to allow for contraction you find that the telephone or electric wires appear shorter and taut in the morning as shown in this diagram this is morning they are very tight and they appear shorter and this is because in the morning the temperatures are low and this will have led to contraction of our wires but when it is hot the wires appear longer and slanted or sagging as you can be able to see here this is because when the temperatures are very high there is expansion and therefore the wires have increased in their size that is why they are appearing longer and they are sagging then another 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 application is what we call the bimetallic metal application in this case we have one bimetallic strip that is commonly used that we call thermostat thermostat is a device for maintaining acid temperature thermostat can be used to control the temperature in electrical devices like iron box or it can also lead to to controlling the temperature of a given room so in our case here we are going to use a thermostat that is used to control the temperature of iron box as shown in our diagram here we have the terminals this is where we connect to the power source we have the knob for setting the temperature we have the insulator here we have the contact then we have our bimetallic strip it is made up of brass and iron and in here we have the contact so how does it work as you connect this to the heater through the terminals you find that the iron box becomes too hot the bimetallic strip will bed curving away from the the contact and that will break the circuit so that we you are able to break and switch off the heater so when the temperatures are low or when it cools the bimetallic strip beds closing the gap between the contacts and the heater is switched on so that way if the iron box is required to be very hot or that is at higher temperatures the setting knob is adjusted to push the metal k such that the contact is tight but when you want to use a low temperature then you adjust the knob by releasing so that the position k is lowered so that thermostat 
is also used to control the temperatures of electric cookers, electric heaters for warming the rooms, and fridges. So finally, we have the assignment. In this assignment, as you can be able to see, they are testing what we have just learned. So make sure that you are able to recall. If you can't recall, go back, revise, and then you come and attempt the assignment. Make sure that you get everything. So thank you and prepare for the end of topic exam.